keep millennials engaged at work? How do I keep millennials engaged at work? How do I keep millennials engaged at work? Is this not one of the most common questions that we find when it comes to human resource management and leading teams in any industry? Because our industry is filled with millennials. Our workforce is filled with millennials. So my question is, question of the day, how do we keep a millennial engaged in our workforce? Welcome everybody to JT and the Raw, show 92. G'day Luke down there in Melbourne, g'day Frosty. I'm coming to you live from Filex, which is probably the largest fitness convention uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. Combination of business tracks, plus also jumping around exercise tracks. Um, so you'll probably see some people wandering up the stairs. In fact, if you count how many people walk up the stairs, compared to how many people go up the escalator, and you'll wonder what industry we are actually in. Good morning, Marissa. How are you? Hey. All right. Hey, good morning. Hi. Yeah, I've got a Marissa actually live here on uh, Facebook Live. There's a Marissa that's just about to walk over. Here she is. Everybody, this is I Marissa. Thought was talking to me. She thought I was talking to her, but I was talking to you, Marissa Hoff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, and that's a beautiful thing about Facebook Live. Anything can happen at any time, any stage. So today, oh, Ryan Hogan. Ryan Hogan. Hello, one audience. The, Hello. <laughs> one of the organisers for Filex, Ryan Hogan, floating around. Hey, it's great to be here anyway. As always, uh, I chew the thin on fitness business, on business, any category you want to talk about. I'm here to help you in relation to running your business better, and I chew the thin on business. Today's focus is the millennial workforce. The reason why I'm talking about that is because I'm actually talking about that in my education session here at Filex on a Saturday. And and I thought I would give you five tips today, five tips if you are interested in finding out all about how to manage your millennials. If you are, give me a love heart right now, whether you're watching live or on replay, give me a love heart right now if you want to know five tips on how to not manage but lead millennials. That's the question for the day. Okay, got a big shout out. First of all, I want to shout out to all the people on the Fitness Business Podcast family who came to the walk this morning. It was an early, early, early morning walk, but we got walking and uh, it was great to have so many people out. Morning, Suze, how are you? Um, I also want to say a huge thanks to Eugene and Tien from uh, Gym Click Media for uh, filming the show and that will be live. We'll have a video out probably by the end of next week. No pressure, guys, to get that up and happening. So today's show. So, morning Tony over there in New Zealand. It's like, how do we lead millennials? We all have them in the workforce. They're different to perhaps everybody else, but they are still human beings and they still have the same sort of needs and wants as a normal human. So some of the things that I'm gonna be talking about actually don't even relate to just millennials. It just relates to leading a individual better in the workforce. So I've got five tips. I'm gonna go through them one by one. And then at the end, I'm gonna ask you which one of these five resonated for you. So whether you're watching live or on replay, which one of these five will resonate for you? So the first one is, millennials are visual people. Millennials are visual people. So what does that mean? That means that in our business, in our department, when we're working with our team of millennials, we need them to see the vision. Like we need to see the vision. So that means you need a visual board. That means you need video. That means you need to be able to take them places so that they can see what the vision is of the business. If you sit there and you just explain, this is what we want to achieve, this is where we're trying to be, they're not going to conceptualize that. They need to see it. So that can be a real challenge for you. They need to be able to see what the difference is between good and great. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Maddie Fletcher. How are you? They, they, you need to be able to see, they want to be able to see the difference between good behavior and great behavior. They want to see the difference between good performance and great performance. 
They need to see that. If you explain it in words, they will glass over with eyes. Is that Steve Anchors there that I saw? Um, is that, they, they just glass over. So we need to be able to ex- just show them that. So for me, I'm thinking a video of this is the right way we do X task or X behavior as opposed to this is the, the wrong way. They need to be able to see the video. Um, they need to be able to see what success looks like in your business. They need to be able to see what a high performance looks like. And they also need to be able to see what results mean. They need to be able to see what results. So remember, when you're leading your millennials, always think visual people. Always think, I need to be able to show them this. I need to show examples. That's why so many of them watch YouTube. So many of them watch this. We need people to be able to see what that good performance looks like. Get a KPM. Kelly Peters McCauley, how are you? Okay, number two. Number two is because of this visual thing, that that a scoreboard is a really critical component in the equation to leading millennials. A scoreboard. So we, we know when we're playing any game of sport, there's a scoreboard. At recently, the Commonwealth Games, um, there was a scoreboard so you could see what times people did. You could see what uh, scores they got in diving or gymnastics. Uh, when we watch any sporting game, we turn to the scoreboard and we can see all the details of what happened and, and, and what, how many touchdowns or how many goals or how many tries were scored. It's all about that sitting on a scoreboard. Your millennial workforce need a scoreboard. They need to see two things. They need to see the score, but they also want to see their contribution. So they want to see their individual stats in order to get that end result. So what's their impact to get that end result? That is a critical component of that scoreboard. Now, I did a JT in the Raw uh, a couple of months ago on exactly what your scoreboard should look like. So if you haven't watched that show, just put scoreboard in the comments below and I will, um, I'll will i send you the link to be able to watch that show. Scoreboard in the links below, whether you're watching live or on replay, just put scoreboard and I will send you the link so that you can understand what I'm talking about with a scoreboard. But this is a critical step number two to leading your millennial workforce. Critical step number three, or tip number three for leading uh, a millennial workforce is professional development. What does professional development look for your millennial workforce? What does it look like? For many of us, it is still old school. It's a classroom. It's having people come in like this conference. Millennials, we're gonna sit them down and we're gonna preach to them and talk to them. Um, And millennials don't necessarily respond to that type of professional development. We think that is the best way to teach, and I'm a teacher, so I'm thinking that this is the best way to teach, but it may not be. So when we're gonna lead our millennials, we want to give them professional development, but we want to give them the option in how they want to learn. So some of them may want to watch a video, some may want to listen to a podcast, some may want to read a book, and some may want to attend a seminar. So we need to understand by truly understanding, understanding our millennial and who works for them, We need them to understand, we need to be able to give them how they want to learn. That's our job as leaders. We have to tailor the learning to suit them rather than having the learning and tailoring the millennial to then fit into our learning pattern. Does that make sense? If that makes sense to you right now, give me a love heart. If, give me a love heart if that makes sense. We've got to tailor our learning in order to match what we need, they, what we, or who they are. Got tongue tied then. We need, to, we need to match our professional development training to the individual as opposed to the other way round. Matty Fletcher, good morning. Uh, again, professional development, yes, we know you can do that all day. Matty Wright, good to see you. Yes, you just did le- leave me. You've gone to breakfast. Matty Wright over here speaking at Filex. Um, great to have him here in Australia. So that was number three professional development, tailoring how we do our professional development for the millennial. What, how do they like to learn? Number four, now this is a really important one. Millennials want you to check in with them. 
Millennials want you as the business owner or as the business manager to just check in with them. They just want to feel loved. And we're going to come up to number five shortly. But number four, number four, professional development tailored like rewards and recognition. Yes, Suze. So we need to tailor the rewards to match our millennial market, but we also need to tailor the uh, professional development to match that millennial as well. Great point, love that. It, it, we'll just check the, uh, check the comments down there from Susan. Uh, it's a great insight into how you reward and recognize your millennials as well. You need to tailor that around them. Okay, so we need to check in. We need to just say, are you okay? Are you okay? And uh, Marcus Buckingham wrote an amazing book, a super book. If you haven't read it, it's called uh, First Break All the Rules, Mental Blank. First Break All the Rules. If you write first in the comments below, I'll send you a link to be able to grab that book. First Break All the Rules. And in that book, he studied with the Gallup organization and identified, studied the workforce and identified 13 questions that we need to be asking our team. And for me, if I'm a manager of a team, here are the six questions out of those 13 I think you need to ask. I know what is expected of me at work. I have the materials and equipment I need to do my job right. I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day. In the last seven days, I received praise or recognition for a good job. My supervisor or someone at work cares about me as a person. Someone at work encourages my development. Okay, now if you miss those five, two, four, if you miss those six questions, put six in the comments below and I will send you those six questions. If you miss those six questions, Put six in the comments below, whether you're watching live or on replay, and I'll send you those six again. So if I'm a manager and I am leading my um, millennial workforce, here is six questions I want to ask them weekly or fortnightly, weekly or fortnightly in a check-in interview, check-in chat. Um, and here it is. I know what I know what is expected of me at work. I have the materials and equipment I need to do my work right. I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day. In the last seven days, I received praise or recognition for a good job. My supervisor or someone at work cares about me as a person and someone at work encourages my development. If you want those six questions, put six as Frosty, Andrew Frost has just done, in the comments below and I will send you those six questions. Okay, so now let's change hats and I want you to think now as the leader of your organisation, the leader of your department. Those six questions you ask as the manager. Now as the leader, here are the questions that I think you should ask. These are the questions I think you should ask. No, no, no research on this at all, other than the ones that I think are important. Here they are. And there's only three of them. First question, why do you like working for your manager? Why do you like working for your manager? G'day, Carol. Question number two. Why do you like working for this business? Why do you like working for this business? And question three. What will keep you happy and working here for another six months? What will keep you happy and working here for the next six months? Now I call these three questions my keeper chat or my keeper interview. So often we talk about when people are leaving, we have an exit interview. Instead of, that's too late, how do we fix problems? For me with my millennials, I wanna show I care, so I'm gonna have this keeper interview. I'm gonna ask those three questions. Um, why do you like working for your current manager? Why do you like working for this business? And what do we need to do to make you happy and keep you working here for the next six months? If you want those questions, put three in the comments below and I'll send you those three questions and you can use them in the workforce. Are you getting value out of this? The, the, the four tips right now. Are you, getting, are you getting value? If you are, just give me a love heart right now so that I can see that there's some love out there and you guys are pulling some great information away from this. Morning, Carly. Good morning, uh, Joanne. How are you? Okay, last point. Last point. Here it is. Relationships. Your millennials, your millennials 
need to know that you care about them, that you care about them as a person. They need to know that they're just not a number. They need to know that you are a transformational leader, that you want to take them from here as an employee to here as an employee. They need to know that journey and know that you care about them as an individual. That's why those keeper interviews, thanks Maddie Fletcher, I'm glad you love that concept. That's why the keeper interviews or the keeper chats, I believe are so critical because it gives them that opportunity to help develop that professional development line, for them to have some ownership and for you to get your fingers on the pole of how they're feeling in the workplace. Morning, Terry Woodward. How are you there, mate, over there at uh, New South Wales Rugby? Hope you're doing great. Okay, so for me, this is a really important point about showing you care. First of all, those three questions are critical. Yes, I get that. But there's also another component to this. And it's like understanding from your millennial workforce, what are their personal goals? Often we know their professional goals, but what are their personal goals and how, as the leader of the business, can you help them achieve those personal goals? Now, I did a whole JT in the Raw on this. So if you put in the comments below, what can I get you to put there? Let's say um, goals. If you put goals in the comments below, I'll send you a link to the previous JT in the Raw show where I talked about having taken the time out for you to understand what your team are trying to achieve personally in their life, whether that be spiritually, whether that be financially, whether that be a relationship. I'll send you the link to that show as well. Uh, Suze just put their goals in the comments. So yeah, put goals in there and I'll send you a link to that show as well. God, there's lots of links today. But this is about me trying to help you guys. I'm chewing the thin on business. JT in the Raw, as always, trying to just add some value to you guys in the workforce because we have so many millennials. All right, here's where the rubber hits the road, guys. I'm going to go through those five tips again. But those five tips, I'm just going to give the names. And your job in the comments is to be able to put one, two, three, four, or five on what you think you need to work on in your workplace. Okay, so we're not managing millennials, we're leading millennials. These are five tips for leading, not managing. Okay, number one, that they're visual people. Number two, they need to see a scoreboard. They want a scoreboard to see their impact on the game of business. Three, professional development. They want to have professional development, how they want to learn. Four, check in with them. Five, having a relationship that shows that you care about them as a person. Which one of those do you need to work on? One, two, three, four, or five. One, be more visual. They're visual people, so have them see more stuff about your business. Two, have a scoreboard so that they can see their impact on the game. Three, professional development in the way they want to be professionally developed. Four, check in with them regularly. Check in with them regularly. And five, show you care about them as a person. Which one of those do you need to work on in your business? In the comments below, one, two, three, four, or five. I'm dead set curious to know which one of those you need to work on. But also just by putting a number in there, that's gonna help you focus, that's gonna help you work on what you need to achieve over the next 30, 40, 60 days in your business. Susan's great, she's inputted number one. So number one was visual people. Number one is visual. So remember, which one of these, last time, five of them, five tips for leading your millennials. Visual people, having them see your vision, having them see their goals. Two, having a scoreboard where they can see their impact on the game of business. Carol's put number two. Number three, professional development. Shaping your professional development around the millennial, not around your business. Number four, check in with them, having some questions, using a keeper interview with them every six months. And number five, Tanya's just put number five in, which is building a relationship with your team that you show that you care care about them more than they are a, a, a number in the business, that they are a person in the business. And Frosty's put number three, shaping that professional development. Whether you watch live or on replay, I love the engagement that you guys give me in those comments below. I love the love hearts that you give me as those emoticons because it shows that I'm, I'm adding value to you and helping you. So please, 
live or on replay, give me one, two, three, four or five. I'm not gonna try and sell you anything. I want you to commit to that because that's the thing you're gonna work on in your business over the next short period of time. You determine what that time is. Guys, that's it. Tomorrow I'm doing a whole session on leading millennials. I've got a 90 minute presentation and the presentation is around um, leading millennials so you have a line of people at your front door wanting to work for you so that you become an employer of choice, that you become a, a leader of millennials and people hear about you and want to work for you and with you as opposed to you always having to go out and find people. Let's attract them with word of mouth because you're a great leader of millennials. Thanks for tuning in to JT in the Raw Show 92. Lots to share. So if you want, I'll just go that over again. If you want to see the JT in the Raw Show on scoreboard, put scoreboard in the comments below. If you want to see the JT in the Raw on um, uh, developing personal goals with your staff, put goals in the comments below. If you want um, the questions, the six questions that you would ask, put six there. And if you want the three questions that I recommend that you use in the Keeper interviews, put three in the comments below and I will send you the links and I'll send you all those questions and get all of that done for you by Monday because we're at this conference over the next couple of days. Hey, now before I go, before I go, before I go, here it is, quote of the week. Thanks, Susan. I love that feedback. Brilliant value in that short session. Hey, I'm so grateful for that. Thank you so much. Okay, when leading your millennial workforce, connect and care for them. When leading your millennial workforce, connect and care for them. That is my quote of the week. You've been tuned in to JT in the Raw. Hey, Ali, how are you? You've been tuned in to JT in the Raw, coming to you live from Filex down here at Darling Harbour. It's going to be a big weekend for the fitness industry. As I said, I'm speaking tomorrow, so if you're down here and you want to come along to a session, it's 10.30 tomorrow morning. Love to have you. I will, um, I'll get you in no matter who you are. You can come into my session. Um, but thank you for tuning in, JT in the Raw. Please, if you know anybody that could benefit from leading millennials, pop their name in the comments below, tag them up, and they can watch the show in their own time. So I love it when you guys share. Thanks for tuning in, as always, to JT in the Raw. Thank you, Tanya, that's a little thumbs up. Great quote I heard from Katy Perry last night, the longest journey is from head to the heart. Oh, what a great quote. Awesome quote from Katy Perry, of all people. That's awesome. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to head off to work now. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. If I see you down here at Filex, come and say g'day. Uh, but otherwise, JT The Royal Show 93 next week.